Hi, Jeremy Weiss here. We're about to see James Cusimano's interview. It was just fantastic. His, uh, the things he's done in his lifetime is just amazing. We had some technical difficulties, so you won't see me, but you'll see him. Enjoy. Hi, it's Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with James Cusimano, co-founder of billion dollar company Catalytica, author of the book Balance, and also co-founder of Chateau Messelli. He's an accomplished leader with many successful careers, which he'll talk about as an entertainer, a scientist, a corporate executive, an entrepreneur. He, having started his career as a lead singer for the Royal Teens, he then received a PhD in physical chemistry and became a fellow of Churchill College at Cambridge University. He pursued business studies at Harvard and Stanford, subsequently served as research scientist and then director of research and development for Exxon. Following that, he co-founded Catalytica, a booming Silicon Valley company with business divisions in clean energy and pharmaceuticals. Dr. Cusimano also founded Chateau Wally Films and produced What Matters Most. This is one of the longest intros ever because there's so many accomplishments by this man. He then moved to Prague where he and his wife Inez renovated Chateau Messali into an award-winning luxury castle, spa hotel, and forest retreat. He's an inspiring speaker, a speaker and an author of numerous technical and business publications. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cusimano, for being with us today. Oh, it's great to be here. Jim is fine. You left out. Uh, you left out kindergarten at Blessed Sacrament School in Jersey. <laughs> and also, the fun fact, which I forgot to mention, is Jim has nine brothers and sisters. Maria, Ther I need to mention them all because there's nine of them. Maria Teresa, Charles Anthony, Salvatore, Joseph, Camille Jean, Grace Cecilia, Lisa Ann, Thomas Edward, Tina Marie, Donna Gina, by mother Carmela and Charles. Is that right? My God, you know him better than I do. <laughs> no, I have it written in front of me because there's no way I can remember that. Um, but we get a, Jim, we get a lot of comments about people struggling with productivity and balance in their life. And people say things like they get distracted, they have too many projects and ideas, they get sidetracked, and they seem to be working so many hours, they don't have enough family and relaxation time, and they just feel overwhelmed. And, you know, your book, Balance, which everyone should check out, I read it last night, phenomenal, love the stories in there. So I'd love for you to talk about how to get more done in less time and lead a balanced life. And I know you were talking to me before about some of the, the low points. Per, so, so we can kind of relate before we get to the catalytical story and the success stories. Can you talk about the, the low points uh, professionally and personally first? Well, let's see. Uh, professionally, uh, <clears throat> Perhaps the, the lowest point in my life professionally was in Catalytica uh, when uh, a major funder who was funding contract research turned around and with very little notice pulled all their money out and um, we had to lay off 20% of the company, which was the only time we ever did a layoff. And it was heart-wrenching. It was challenging. It was the most devastating thing that uh, I and our executive team had to go through. So that, I think, professionally, for sure. Uh, personally, uh, was the, would be the, the death of my, my former wife, uh, who was a screenplay writer, who died of breast cancer. And I think that was really tough to get through. Um, but after uh, a couple of years of, uh, of challenge and meditation and climbing mountains and doing all kinds of things to try to get through it, I met another incredible woman. So I've been blessed to be married to two wonderful women, my, my current wife, Inez. Yeah, that's horrible. Um, what about that time, can you t tell us about when you were sleeping three to four hours in the, in the car? Oh, well, as you mentioned, uh, uh, for many years I was a lead singer and a keyboard player for the Royal Teens, and uh, we recorded a very interesting album um, and, and it was called uh, Newies but Oldies and these were hits of the 60s done in the style of the 50s and um, this was a very secret uh, project for the uh, record company they didn't want anybody to know about it because it was the first time it had ever been done so they wanted the recordings to be done at night and secondly I had accepted a summer job I was in my last year of graduate school at Rutgers University I had accepted a job for the summer during the day with Exxon, 
And so I was working at Exxon uh, during the day and recording every night in New York City. Oh and uh, basically slept in the car. We I took turns with my buddies who were driving and got the three or four hours max sleep per night and then try to catch up on the weekend. That was tough. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And, and there was even a story in the book about your opportunity with the Four Seasons. And that was interesting yes. too. Yeah, that was, that was a very difficult decision because I was uh, in my last year of graduate school getting my doctorate in physical chemistry and I got a call from Las Vegas from a gentleman by the name of Frankie Fain. He was an agent that booked us quite a few times and he had told us that um, one of the original Four Seasons uh, was leaving the group and um, they were looking for a replacement. And he had talked to Bob Gordio. Bob Gordio uh, was in the Royal Teens and so he knew of me and uh, they had asked me to come out and audition and it was pretty much a shoe in from what Frankie Fame was telling me did I want the job well I thought about this I mean it was an incredible offer uh, and I thought about it and I turned it down after a weekend of thinking about it and the reason was is because I was in my last year of graduate school I would have given up my PhD my love was to really get into technology and building companies and um, just would have taken me in the in the wrong direction, and in fact, if you go to see the the, the famous Broadway show um, Jersey Boys, mm -hmm. they talk about this incident. And a very talented guy did get the job, Joey Labracio or Joey Long, his name is uh, stage name, and uh, that was really really fantastic. But that was a very tough decision. Yeah. So going from that, those tough times, and you know, sometimes sleeping three to four hours in the car ride so you can do your work and the the music. Tell us about a time that just puts a huge smile on your face when you were felt really balanced. I know you have a great uh, personal and professional story for this as well. Well, I, I would say that you know the reason I wrote the book is I didn't I didn't learn balance in um, when I was 21 years old. I learned it along the way, and um, one of the reasons I learned it is because through the course of our journey together, my my partner Ricardo Levy, life lifelong it seems, 30 years in business together, we both and the executives we attracted wanted to live great personal lives and professional lives and it wasn't obvious on how to do that but we eventually learned how to do that and that's what I write about and I would say the culmination of that when I see uh, something that puts a smile on my face personally it's every morning when I drive to school my six-year-old little Julia hmm. to the uh, international school in Prague we have incredible discussions, and by the way, I learn a lot from that six-year-old. So that, for me personally, is is a wonderful uh, example of balance between because I'm 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 still running a company, I'm writing books, and I still spend time with my my wife and my daughter. Professionally, um, one of the great honors for me uh, in 2011, uh, Rutgers University um, uh, elected me to the Rutgers Hall of Distinguished Alumni, alumni. and this is a composite of Fortune 500 CEOs, uh, Nobel laureates, I mean just incredibly talented people. So it was a wonderful award and I'm very proud of it. Um, the thing that was really interesting as an interesting side story, when I got there um, they asked me if I would go up with the band and sing a few songs since I had been in the entertainment business. So I talked to the band for about 15 minutes backstage and went up and did a half hour show of oldies but goodies from the 60s and of course it went over so well they invited me back the next year to be the master of ceremonies and to do another half hour show which is what I did last year so it's it's been fun those are two things that really put a smile on my face and I could attest because last night I watched some wonderful renditions on YouTube of you so they were great also thank you, thank you um, what was the time Jim, that you remember that you were really tested, one of those pivotal moments where the balance was tested in, in the business. Yeah. Um, one of the most challenging professional things that tested me uh, was when uh, we were acquiring um, a large pharmaceutical plant from Glaxo Welcome uh, in Greenville, North Carolina. And that plant... Um, was going to have 1,500 people. By the time we did all of the acquisition, it would bring us up to 2,000 people. We had to borrow um, 
$300 million to pay for it. We were a small company. Our sales at the time were about $40 million. We were going to go from $40 million to $375 million with a stroke of a pen. We wow. were competing against a major uh, Fortune 500 companies, Bayer in Germany, DSM in Holland. These were all major pharmaceutical companies. And, uh, well, basically what Rick and I did, Ricardo and I did, is we went to our wives and our families. We said, hey, folks, this is going to be a tough one. It's going to take us about six months. We want your understanding, if we can, for the next six months. Well, we're going to be out of pocket doing this acquisition. But when we finish, we're going to be right back online. And so that was one time when it was really a tough call, and I, uh, it was very, very difficult. But we all rejoiced afterwards. The families got together. We had a huge party, and uh, I've had a party with, uh, with, with Baxter Welton as well. I love it. Um, now, people obviously out there want to know, how can I go from that sleeping through three or four hours in a car, going from one job to another job, to that big moment of acquisition? And I know you were mentioning one thing the audience should start doing right now that you mentioned in the book, Balance. Could you? So we're talking about the, the one thing the audience should do right now to get started to be more balanced. Well... I, I would say this. Uh, first of all, if you're if you found uh, your calling in life, okay, I can tell you a couple of simple things to do. But I'd like to go back to the beginning, if I may. And I would say that in order to be in, in balance, uh, both professionally and personally, here's what I found. Now, maybe it's not the only formula, but this really worked. So go ahead. You were saying. So, so I I think the most important thing is to find out what your your basic fundamental thing that you're good at. And I, in the book, I, I tell you how to do this. It's basically the answer to four questions that are easy to ask but difficult to answer. And I tell you how to go about that. The second is once you do that, is to create a vision and a dream that is important to you. And then that has to be congruent with a set of values, five or six things that are important to you. These aren't things that are right or wrong. They're just the way you want to function. And then you create a values-based time management plan, and I show you how to do that. And it must be values-based. There's lots of time management plans, and they're worthless unless they're connected to your personal values. And then finally, these are two things you can do right away. First of all, don't do anything that is tension-relieving, like answering lots of worthless emails and opening up all kinds of mail. Let somebody else do that. Try to stick with your goal achieving things. And finally, if you can develop the, the, uh, the ability to meditate, which is very easy to do, it's misunderstood, it's very easy to do, 30 minutes a day every morning, I've been doing it for almost 30 years now, you will find that your, 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 your balance, your capability, your effectiveness, your efficiency, your creativity will go up exponentially. Yeah, that's powerful. 30 years, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, and, and it's, you know, this is not, I'm not talking about anything spiritual necessarily. Uh, I'm talking about something that is a relaxation technique that will allow your consciousness to, to really function effectively. Yeah. So if you could, that's great. So people should definitely, you know, kind of figure out what they're calling, create a personal vision, create the life plan, and do some of those, you know, relaxation techniques, meditation in the morning to get started. What is, um, just to end, and I, I recommend anyone get the book Balance. I mean, I listen to or read three to four books a week, and this is one of the best ones. Tell us one of your favorite stories from, from Balance. There's a male girl story that I love. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, I was playing with the Royal Teens, and I was uh, in my last year of uh, graduate school, and I took a summer job working with Exxon, because I thought that might be a good place to go to work after I got my doctorate. And the I was there only two weeks, and I was sharing an office with a Dr. D.J.C. Yates, David Yates, a very famous man in the field of catalytic science. And I had been hired by John Sinfeld, who was my boss, and Dr. Sinfeld had been nominated for the Nobel Prize a couple of years. Uh, so these are really incredible people. And I was in this office arguing with David Yates about some of the things that I believed in, and they, uh, John came in and was trying to manage that. And then all of a sudden, a very lovely blonde male girl came in to deliver the mail, and she looked at me, and she said, Dino, 
I saw you on television last night on Dick Clark. Can I have your autograph? At which point, David and John turned to me and said, Who are you? <laughs> and so I had to tell them uh, I was the Royal Teens, and they thought it was great. I had tried to keep my life separate because I thought there was no way these scientists were going to accept some rock and roller into, uh, into Exxon. But it turned out to be a real plus. <laughs> I love it. So thank you so much, Jim, for taking the time. Please, everyone, check out Balance and reach out and thank Jim whenever you have a chance for his great stories. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Appreciate Thanks. your interest.